We go now to Ferguson, Missouri. That was the scene in Ferguson, Missouri, just outside of St. Louis last night, as police fired tear gas, stun grenades, and smoke bombs to break up a fifth day of protests following the fatal police shooting of Michael Brown. The unarmed African-American 18-year-old was shot dead on Saturday. Police say Brown assaulted an officer and tried to reach for his weapon. But eyewitnesses say Brown was shot with his arms up as he tried to flee an officer's fire. Local police have still not released the name of of the officer who shot him. Earlier this week, police said an autopsy confirmed Brown died of multiple gunshot wounds, but they refused to say how many times he was shot or to release any more details pending toxicology results, which could take weeks. An attorney for Brown's family said the teen's body has been turned over to them and they plan to seek a second autopsy. On Wednesday, officials confirmed the Justice Department had opened a federal civil rights investigation into the shooting. Last night, police arrested at least 10 people, including St. Louis Alderman Antonio French, who has been posting video online of the protests and who appeared on Democracy Now! earlier this week. Journalists from The Washington Post and The Huffington Post were also arrested last night and then released without charges. They were arrested while working on stories at a McDonald's restaurant. At times, the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, look like a war zone this week, as police patrol the streets in armored vehicles. News photographers captured a striking image earlier this week of a team of police officers dressed in military gear pointing their high-powered guns at a young African-American man who has his hands in the air. Yahoo News reports the Defense Logistics Agency has confirmed the Ferguson Police Department is part of a federal program in which the Pentagon distributes hundreds of millions of dollars of surplus military equipment from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to civilian police forces across the country. For the latest on Ferguson, we go now to St. Louis, where we're joined by Patricia Vines, Democratic committee woman of Ferguson Township. She's been out in the streets every night documenting the protests on Twitter. Patricia Vines, thank you so much for joining us. Can you describe what took place last night? Hi, Amy. Good morning. Uh, last night, it started well, first, tensions are continuing to rise. It's been a very volatile situation going on in the community. There had been tear gas uh, prior to the two nights before. And even, what was it, Tuesday night, there was another officer-involved shooting uh, that happened. So things continue to escalate. There were peaceful protests during the day. I know that there was a call to ask people not to demonstrate at night. Um, and I just don't see how that is not going to happen. The protesters and residents who support this cause are not going to be forced to stay in their houses when they want to show just how unjust this really, really is. Last night, uh, it got very chaotic very quickly. This was the most, I guess, uh, visceral response that I've seen by the police so far. They had the armored cars out, you know, a lot sooner than I expected. You had police in military uniforms sitting on top of the trucks with, you know, snipery looking rifles pointed at people in the daylight. Uh, people were out protesting in the day. Even a church group had come down on a flatbed truck and was playing gospel music, and they still had this type of artillery looking uh, equipment out on the street. It was pretty scary even in the daylight. And as it started to get dark, things got a lot more out of control. And Patricia, uh, I uh, Patricia I'm Bynes, uh, what about this whole issue of the police chief refusing to release the name of the officer or even any details about how many times Michael Brown was shot? What's been the impact of that reticence to provide basic information in the community? Well, this just adds to the level of mistrust that people have been saying and discussing for quite some time. Um, people in the community know who the officer is because he shot Mike Brown in broad daylight in the morning. And so it's for the people in the community, they know the police officer. We think it's right to release his name. Can you that tell us there. his name, Patricia Bynes? Can... I'm, I'm not going to do that. Well, go ahead but with what you were saying. We know that there are people in the 
We know that there are people in the community who uh, may have been harassed by this officer, and if we make his name known, they might have a chance to come forward and tell other things that he may have done to other people. But this is the type of thing, it's aggravating the community, and it's really, really making things worse. I wanted to turn to the reporters um, who were arrested at McDonald's. Yeah. Washington Post reporter Wesley Lowry and Huffington Post reporter Ryan Riley were both arrested Wednesday after police and SWAT gear entered a McDonald's where they were working and ordered everyone to leave. Riley said the police asked him for an ID after he started taking photos. He spoke to MSNBC's Chris Hayes. And the worst part was he slammed my head against the glass purposefully um, on the way out of uh, the McDonald's and then sarcastically apologized for it. They, they essentially acted as a military force. It was, it was just incredible. That's Huffington Post reporter Ryan Riley, who was arrested along with Washington Post reporter Wesley Lowry. Lowry said the police, quote, slammed me into a soda machine at one point, setting off the Coke dispenser. Later on, Los Angeles Times reporter Matt Pierce tweeted, quote, Ferguson chief tells me Wesley Lowry and Ryan Riley's arresters were probably somebody who didn't know better. And then I heard a debate this morning, Patricia Bynes, on CNN, where the person defending the police officers was saying, you don't know, don't rush to judgment, they might have arrested the reporters to protect them. Patricia Bynes. Oh, wow. That's the type of protection we need these days. Uh, it's, at, it's adding fuel to the fire of a community that is already does not trust them. So now we're seeing an escalated in, uh, uh, cases of asking uh, media to stop filming. Uh, there was a tear gas thrown at an Al Jazeera crew last night, and police came and took down their cameras. So if they're concerned about looking uh, thorough, it's just not looking fair. And so when the community is calling for a fair and thorough investigation by St. Louis and St. Louis County thinks that they can do that, this type of quasi-military activity and trying to uh, come down hard on the media doesn't help that.